I've been getting a lot of questions about playing chords on the bass, and I think today is the day we are going to jump right in and take care of this topic once and for all. <laughs> Friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. I know it's been a while. And I know I say that in every video. Uh, <laughs> but I'm back, and today we're talking about chords. And uh, I want to simplify chords so that everyone can really get a, a deep understanding of how to play these things and how you can recognize the shapes and the chord qualities and, um, and then just play this stuff and have fun for yourself. So here's how we'll start this. I'm going to play the diatonic chords of G major. If you don't know what I mean by that, it's okay. I'm going to take you through the shapes and through the scales and we'll, uh, we'll have you playing these things in no time. So, as I said, diatonic chords of G major. So what I want to do is I want to start with just playing a G major scale, starting from the third fret of the E string, volume, third fret of the E string, and playing a G major scale and going up to the third. There's my root. I want to go two notes beyond the root to the third. Now here's the deal. So when we play chords, whether it's on piano or guitar or bass or what have you, um, usually the chords have what's called a shell voicing, where you take the chord tones of uh, a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. Now, on bass, because it's such a low instrument, um, playing the third and the fifth might end up sounding a little bit muddy. So we eliminate one of these notes, and it's usually the fifth. So what happens is we really get the chord quality happening by um, checking out what's going on with the third, whether the third is, is major or minor. Now on bass, what we do with this information is we take the root of the scale, the third of the scale, and the seventh of the scale, the major seventh in this case, um, and we take those notes. But what happens is we take the third, and we raise that by an octave. So now I have the root, I skip the third B on the A string, and then play the seventh, and then that B is replaced by its octave. So I have root, major seventh, and the third up top, and that voicing resonates um, at a much more pleasant frequency than if you were to play Right? It's kind of muddy when you play it that way. That's just playing the third in its sort of root position. But when I take the third up the octave, the same chord sounds much more harmonious. Now here I want to do the same thing with a, a G minor scale, right? So if I play a G minor, natural minor, up to the minor third, something very cool happens. I get a chord voicing where all the notes are on the same fret, right? I have the root note, G. I have the minor seventh, which is on the same fret, third fret of the D string, which is F. And then that B flat, instead of playing that minor third on the A string, which would end up sounding very muddy, I take that B flat and I raise it up the octave and I get this chord voicing, which sounds so good. So, we can recognize that as the shape of a minor 7 chord, where all the notes are on the same fret. I play the E string, I skip the A string, play the D string, and the G string, and all the notes are on the same fret. And every time I do that, I'm playing a minor chord. Right? Same thing for the major. So, when I play the G major, up to the third. There's my third that's up the octave, there's my major seventh, and there's my root. So then what happens is I recognize this shape where I have the root note, the tonic, on one fret. And then I go up one fret and I play 
the next two notes as I skip the A string and go to the next two strings. So that means I've got third fret of the E string and then fourth fret of the D and G strings to allow for this chord. Right? Now that's the shape. So anytime I have that shape, that's going to be a major seven chord. Make sense? I hope so. The next part of this lesson is going to be a bit of a detour uh, because essentially we're going to be talking about the modes. So if you're not familiar with the modes, then I would suggest that you check out this video and then come back right here. I'll be waiting and uh, everything will be great and all the stuff that I talk about henceforth will make so much sense. So as I go through this next part of the exercise, uh, I'm not going to refer to the modes by their names. I'm going to talk about the, uh, the different sort of alterations as far as the scale degrees are concerned with respect to either a major or a minor scale. All right? Uh, this will make sense as I get into it. Mm -hmm. So we start with a G major scale. And again, all I'm doing is playing G major past the root up to the third. Now when I do that, here's what I want to do. I want to finish with the chord. Here's the third, here's the major seventh, and here's the root. And that's going to be the bulk of our exercise. Now what we'll do is we'll go through and play all of the, essentially the modes, but we will end each scale with the corresponding chord. Does that make sense? I'll show you what I mean. The next chord is the two chord, um, and in this case, it's going to be an A minor chord. Now again, if you remember the shape, everything's going to be on the same fret. So if I find my root note A, that's at the fifth fret. And then I follow through with the fifth fret of the D and G strings to have to give me this shape. And that's my A minor chord. So what I want to do here to play the corresponding scale, um, the two chord is essentially a minor scale where the sixth note of the scale is sharp. In other words, a, a natural minor scale with a major sixth. Right? So that gives me this pattern. There's my raised six. There's my third, the octave of the lower third, the C in this case. So when I get to that top note, I want to come back down with the chord. So I play, and you can take this as slow as you want. Just make sure you have the shape under your fingers, and that's the chord. For me, what I like to do, this could be a bit more of a challenge, but usually I just play through, and I will bar all those, all three of those notes with my index finger. That might be a little bit more. Uh, that might be a little bit more difficult for uh, the less experienced players, but get around it any way that you can, even if you have to make that switch so that you can um, cover those notes with different fingers. So we've moved up to the third uh, chord, the three chord, which is also minor. Now, in this particular case, I have a natural minor scale where the second note of the scale is flat. So if I play B minor, That's a natural minor scale. But when I take that second note and make it flat, I have this shape. So when I play through that scale, there's the corresponding chord. Now if it makes it easier on your life, what you can do is play the scale ascending and descending because it might be easier to access the chord from the root note as opposed to um, accessing the chord from the top note, the third. 
so that sounds like this. There's my minor scale with the flat two. And then I'll come back down the scale. That's totally cool to do as well, right? So here's what we have so far. We've got G major, the two chord is an A minor, the three chord is a B minor. The four chord is a major seven chord. So we have a major scale where the fourth note of the scale is going to be raised or sharp. And that gives us this sound. So it's a regular C major scale, just that fourth note is sharp. And I play all the way up to the third. And then again, there's my third, there's my major seven, and then there's my root. And again, you can play ascending, and then come back down the scale, and then access the chord that way. Either way, you're creating a beautiful exercise. And in doing so, you're um, getting the sound of the exercise into the memory, into the muscle memory, and also into your sort of sonic memory, so that you remember the sound of the scale and the sound of the chord that goes with it. The next chord is the five chord. The five chord is dominant. What does that mean? That means I have a major scale, but the seventh is minor, right? So it's a major scale and the seventh note of the scale is flat. In this case, uh, I am at D, which is the 10th fret of the E string, and I just play my major scale, volume, my major scale, but not this note. That's the major seventh, so I'll bring that back one fret to the minor seventh, and take it all the way up to the third. I'll do that again, just to give you a sense of the actual scale. One more time. So this is D major with a flat seven. So there's my flat seven and the third up top. That gives me a dominant seventh chord. So then when I play through that part of the exercise, that's the sound. And again, I'll do ascending and descending if you are so inclined. Huh? Pretty good. So here's what we have so far. We have our one chord, which is major. Our two chord is minor. Three chord is minor. Four chord is major, major seven. Five chord is dominant, major third, flat seven major third minor seven and that leads us to our sixth chord our sixth chord is an, is a natural minor scale no alterations no big deal and we are on the note E so that's E minor sixth chord is minor the last chord the seven chord is a minor seven flat five chord. But if we're just dealing with the, the seventh and the third, it's the same shape as any other minor chord, right? So here's what we're dealing with. Uh, it's a minor scale, but the second note of the scale is flat and the fifth note of the scale is flat. So I have a minor flat two. There's my uh, flat five, seven, root, two, there's my minor third. So when I play through that, whoops, I grab that with my thumb. Hope that's okay. Or I can play it ascending and descending. And then I'm back in G major. So, what I want you to do is play through. Start with the scale and then grab the corresponding chord that goes with that scale. Um, and then what I want you to do is not play the scale and just get a sense of playing through the chords. So, the one chord again 
is major. The two chord is minor. Three chord is minor. Four chord is major. Five chord is dominant. Six chord is minor. Seven chord is minor with a flat five. And then the last chord is the first. And then see if you can do that ascending and descending. And that's the vibe. I hope that makes sense to all of you. If you do like this video, you know what to do. Um, like, subscribe, donate, join the channel, all that good stuff really helps me out in a huge way. And um, have fun with this stuff. I mean, making music is about having fun, right? So do not lose sight of that. Even in the, the deepest of work modes, you still want to have fun when you play music. Because it's the most beautiful thing in the world to be able to express yourself on a musical instrument. And I don't want to take that for granted for a second. And I don't want you to either. We're very fortunate to be able to do this. And, um, and we should be having fun while we do. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And I will see you in the next video, hopefully very soon. Peace.